Hello. Go ahead and open up a new Colab notebook. That's colab.research.google.com. Go ahead and click on your new notebook option. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one last lesson on pandas. And we're going to take a data set with quite a few categorical columns and look at how to convert them to numerical columns. In addition, you are going to learn how to access data directly from the UCI machine learning repository, at least what I think is arguably the best way here in Colab. Okay, so UCI machine learning repository is an outstanding repository of data sets. So, you know, if you just type in UCI machine learning repository in a Google search, you will certainly, wow, a lot of ads showing up there. You will certainly find it, okay? Links will be provided below as well. And you can see that they've got a list of the newest data sets. Um, these recordings are in end of September of 2021, so Maybe it hasn't been updated in a bit here. And then we have the most popular data sets. And look how popular they actually are. Number of hits since 2007. The IRIS data set, the most popular one, is over 4 million. In case you're wondering, the IRIS data set is arguably the first data set. Um, it's really symmetric and really nice. I would encourage you to check it out if you've not seen it before. We're going to use the second most popular one. It's classified as the adult data set. Now this, <laughs> I think that name is not the best name. It's also been known as the census data set. So when you're on here, go ahead and click on it. And this is what you get. You get some information about the data set and you also get, look, this is a machine learning repository. So the difference between this and other say data repositories or that these are explicitly designed to make predictions. I should say designed, I mean, you know, the data could have been designed for anything, but they're being used for that. So if you look at the abstract, it's to predict whether income exceeds 50K a year based on census data, okay? I, the adult census thing kind of is peculiar. Census seems more clear to me. So here's how you access it. Um, there are some quirks, okay? So you click on the data folder and then you find the data. Okay, so here it is, adult.data. Um, also note adult.names includes the names of the columns. And what you do is this, here's how I do it at least. You can copy the phrase adult.data and append it to the end of the URL. Okay, hit command V. Now the goal for this is certainly to do hyperlinks instead of downloading to a local machine. Okay, so now if I copy the whole URL, the adult.data at the end, that will give me access to the data. And I wanna show you what happens. So go back into your notebook, put in the URL, put it in quotes, and let's go ahead and open that data as a data frame. Now, even though it's a .data file, it will actually work as a CSV file. So let's do df equals pd.read. Oh, before I can use pd, I have to import pandas. Okay, and I wanna show you something. So import pandas as pd. Okay, let's go ahead and run those by themselves. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna make sure that pd is in there. So you can see if I type pd dot, hopefully, Google can catch up, read underscore. You see a lot of different file options that pandas can read in. You know, we see HTML, we see Feather, we see Excel, JSON, Pickle, lots of standard options. Note that data is not one of them. So I think this is an older kind of storage of data. And so the underscore CSV will actually read and you can put in the URL. Okay, now that just reads it. We want to define that as a new data frame and go ahead and pull it up. And I want you to see what, what you get. So shift enter. And here we have it. Okay, there's one major issue, which maybe you can see. 
give you a moment to, to look at it. And while looking at it, let's go ahead and retitle this as well. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, there are different ways you can title these. I mean, for the purposes of this class, this is going to be like our initial classifier. So it's going to call it initial classifier model. Okay. And we will be doing a little cleaning, okay? Because this, as you can see, the, the two glaring issues jump out at me. Number one, if I look at the columns, okay, this clearly is not the column. It's not column name 13. This looks like a row and the columns have not been included. You know, they're separated out here as dot names. And unfortunately, to my knowledge at this time, there's not like a just super clean way to convert those, that's easy. You could certainly do it. And some of you could probably figure out a better way th than I can. Please post in the comments if you find a smooth way to do this. Um, so we're gonna fix the column names. And then the other main piece is that there's a lot of categorical columns, right? But the we don't wanna delete them, we wanna convert them into numerical columns. So let's look at those two pieces. Now let me just show you one little tip if you ever are in this situation and you don't know what the columns are, um, you can set header equal to none. And well, let's just see what that does. Go ahead and do it. Press shift enter. And now you can see it's indexed. So this is better. Um, it's workable, but I, because of, of what we're going to use to analyze the categorical columns, I actually want to get the column names in. Okay, now if I go back to the UCM Machine Learning Repository, and I click on this, it's going to download it. Okay, so that's not really what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for, see they usually have them in here, a list of attributes. These are in fact the column names, okay? And, you know, the, the, this is just how I do it. I copy and paste that and actually change it, okay? Now, it is a little tedious, but it's not that bad, right? It's just, I mean, the, the issue, of course, age continuous, you just want age there, right? And if you look at some of the columns like marital status and native country, there's a lot to delete. I mean, it takes a couple of minutes. So, I also want to highlight that, you know, if someone's already done this for you, you can do it. It's probably multiple places. Now, I know where I did it. I did it for the hands-on gradient boosting with XGBoost and Scikit-Learn book, whose GitHub pages we will use from time to time since this class is based on that general outline. So, once again, if I go to hands-on gradient boosting, well, if, if you just start, even if I type it wrong, you know, you'll get it. Hands-on gradient boosting with XGBoost and Scikit-Learn GitHub pages. I've been mentioning that I think you all should bookmark this page for this class because we will use it. And it's got also additional information for you, additional notebooks. And if I click on chapter one, so we're still working through chapter one material. This will be the last lesson on chapter one material. Here is an IPython notebook made for the book. And I included this data set as a lesson toward the end. It's got the bike rentals info from the beginning. And if I scroll all the way down here, I can see that um, here is a list of the columns. In addition, it shows how to um, name them. It's the dot columns attribute. So I'm just gonna copy that code and modify it. Um, and it just, it's not DF census here, it's just DF, okay? And I'll adjust the headers as well. Of course, this is provided to you so that you can, don't have to copy it, but you know, I'd like to show you how to find things in terms of how I find them because, you know, finding things is really gonna make things gel for you. Okay, so press shift enter and run it. And now you can see it's just what we're looking for, okay? The next piece that we'll look at is now how to deal with all these categorical columns.